Welcome back to my channel, guys. It's me, Irvin, with another manga volume review. This is going to be on volume 12 of The Promised Neverland. Yeah, quite a bit of volumes that I've released on this one now. Uh, volume 12 is going to be uh, not available yet. Uh, physical copy, you can only read it digitally online through the Shonen Jump uh, website or app. So that's where I read it. Um, I read the chapters that are going to be part of the uh, 12th volume and then uh, anyways I ended up in the I think uh, chapter 106 is the last chapter of that volume so anyways here we go uh, before I continue a few things one if you have not done so uh, please subscribe to my channel hit that bell button if you guys don't man mind Gosh, I'm saying words all wrong today. And uh, you'll be notified when I go live and upload videos. Also, if you want to further support my channel, you guys can do so by becoming a Patreon or by giving Super Chat in those live videos like I just did a few days ago uh, or becoming in some other way type of donor and you guys can get an exclusive giveaway for you guys each month uh, just for people that donate and support. You guys will get that giveaway just for you guys. Uh, anyways, uh, other than that, guys, go check out the first 11 volume reviews I have on this series. Yes, it's already 11 videos that I've made. This is the 12th one. And, uh, yeah, there's a spoiler alert to this volume because I will talk about it in some detail. And there is quite a bit of things to spoil, to be honest. So, uh, it all starts with them kind of uh, showing their everyday life, how they're living together, how they're still studying, how they're still trying to figure out where the seven walls are and basically saying we're gonna go here we're gonna go here we're gonna go here to look for the places so they essentially go and come back and basically one chapter and they don't find it the first time and the second chapter of the volume essentially it starts with the bad guys the um, people that are looking for them the people that are uh, have um, in a way betrayed humans but they think the humans have betrayed them so kind of just depends how you look at it uh, i'm trying to look for a name but i don't think we have a name for him yet but it's the blonde guy who is looking for them uh who is the brother of mr minerva who is possibly already dead uh he is uh, essentially still looking for them and uh, realizes that when he goes to a mission to find him and actually thinks that he finds them ends up finding only what seems to be a uh empty uh shelter so uh, ends up being that Mr. Minerva built quite a bit of shelters. Uh, not sure if there were decoys or if there were just multiple shelters for the for different kids to find, but uh, they found a decoy essentially or an empty one. Um, then the entire volume gives us a whole time jump. Uh, we go from them returning with all the kids and planning to go to all these places to them uh, going a whole. Uh, was it 18 months, I guess, into the future, I believe, uh, around 18 months, uh, basically two months before them complaining their promise of going back for Phil. Uh, oh, I forgot that part, actually. In the second chapter, we do hear about Phil and the kids and what they're doing and how, how they're doing. Um, and essentially, all the kids from uh, the house where... Um, Emma and Ray and all the rest of the kids came from all those kids were separated uh, Phil told the story that he hasn't seen mom anymore uh, he there's a new mom he goes to his new home and each month still one kid is being um, rehomed or you know harvest for food and he's just keeping quiet he's waiting for Emma he's trying his best and still training to be uh, the best for when she comes back. Now, this is all sweet and also sad at the same time because you see the struggles of Phil. Uh, but then at the end of this chapter, we do see that the blonde guy goes and um, takes him with him. He, he requests Phil and wants to take him to in, interrogate, interrogate him. We last see him there and really don't even hear him uh, again in the volume. So we don't know where Phil is. Phil now, I guess, is uh, either abducted or taken away like Norman was. So we don't know where, where he is. Norman, we haven't heard of him. We actually did not hear of him in this volume either. So we don't know if Norman, what the heck he's doing. Okay, so we have that time jump in the middle of the volume. And in the volume, 
essentially explains that they do eventually find the place where possibly the seven walls may reside uh in all this, they're celebrating. We obviously see all these kids at an older age. We, we see Emma as an older kid. And it's a little bit shocking, to be honest. The, uh, the artwork was really well done on just aging the kids. Uh, really, the only ones that didn't, didn't really look like they aged were the adults, which, you know, Lucas probably would have looked the same if he was uh, 25, 27, I guess. It's, it would be the same kind of looking guy, so... Anyways, uh, they then plan to go explore it more, and then they uh, are stopped by the blonde guy. The blonde guy has a small team of people that are going in into the shelter, so they all start hiding, and basically it just becomes a uh, cat and the mouse, uh, or cat and the rat, what's that game called? Anyways, where they're just hiding, 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 trying to figure it out, and they seem to know more than they think, so... Um, ends up being that Lucas kills a guy to uh, kind of throw them off on the cameras and then um, they're surrounded. Their exit is blocked off and two of the kids are killed um, and they're cornered. They're surrounded by, by these by these gunmen. So what they end up doing is Lucas uh, tells them, you know, I killed a guy, there's an opening, go this way. So they, they do go that way. And then Lucas and uh, the adult, the other adult, which I, I forget his name because they never called him a name. Uh, they gave him a name last time, I guess. I guess they still call him Geezer. So Geezer and Lucas are left behind, and uh, they're the adults, and they said, we're going to take care of it. Now, the reason they do that is uh, a key point that Emma thought about it before is that the kids have never killed a human. They've killed demons, but they've never killed a human. So they probably are not ready for that yet. So Lucas and the geezer say, go, we will take care of this in the way of we're going to kill him. Because if they don't kill him, they're still going to chase him down. They're still going to get killed. So they, they have to stop them right there and then. So um, they stay behind and essentially the volume ends with them uh, saying to each other, this is not a bad place to die. Which kind of sucks because you kind of want them to not kill themselves. Uh, I have a few theories on all this. Um, obviously, I will start volume 13 Probably today because I have been uh, trying to do this video uh, as fast as possible so I can continue reading and still give my my actual uh, theories in this video um, and, and not like my real theory is not I found out what happened. So uh, my I guess my main one is they kind of feel like they're going to die so they have something under their sleeve. They probably have uh, the idea of blowing up the entire um, shelter. I, I know Gilda had that button that apparently would, would explode the entire shelter. So I have I have a hunch that the geezer has that, uh, and he wants to basically kill himself with the people inside. Now I don't know if they're going straight to that or if they're gonna maybe try to fight and then realize that they're too weak against these guys because these guys used to be look to be really well trained. At killing, they're, they they look like pretty good soldiers. So I feel like they're gonna either maybe kill one and then fail, or maybe kill a couple and then fail, uh, and then rely on exploding the entire shelter. Now I could be wrong, and they and might end up killing them, but I don't know. Uh, I I just feel like they the, they were trying to foreshadow their death because they said this is not a bad place to die. So oh well. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have not done so, uh, oh sorry, uh, a, a little bit more on the on the volume. I forgot that part. Uh, this volume itself was better than volume eleven. To be honest, volume eleven was pretty slow and it it really lacked the uh, hook at the end of the volume. To be honest, um, it didn't really make me want to read volume twelve. I'm glad that I read volume twelve because volume twelve did have a hook it was great it gives us a start of the new arc them as older kids as well as them fighting the seven walls and now not having a shelter to live in uh so i definitely liked volume 12 more than the volume 11 don't think it's the best volume though i think it's maybe in the top five maybe top six of the one of the volumes that i've read so far but uh overall i would recommend it it's the beginning of the next arc so uh, it does give us a few uh, 
unanswered questions that make us kind of return. So, where is Norman? Where is Phil? Uh, why the heck are these people killing them? And uh, they know about the Seven Walls because they were surprised when they heard about the Seven Walls. So, they know about them. They just were surprised that the kids know about them. So, anyways, all in that, uh, it was a great volume. So, thank you for watching this video again. If you have not done so already, subscribe or become a Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your love and support. If you want to check out more videos on this series, go check them out in my channel. Or you can check them out in uh, other people's channels if you want. Or uh, if you want to watch more manga volume reviews or chapter reviews, there's a bunch of those in my channel as well. Thank you guys again. And like always... Don't be strangers. See you guys.